fam. I'm a certified super shark expert. Hi, I'm Velda. Just Velda. Okay. So we're here to talk about the most abundant and most studied shark in the world, the dogfish shark. They're found everywhere. They like to dwell in the bottom of the ocean. But they like to stay between temperatures of 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. They will venture into brackish waters, a fancy word for salt water. Uh, the dogfish will grow uh, to around like an average of three to four feet. And they're considered small for a shark, but that's pretty big. Like three to four feet, that's big, but it's small. And so when babies are born, they're like eight inches to 12 inches. That's just a baby. But don't think that just because they're small, they're not dangerous. In fact, the spiny, spiny dogfish shark has venom in its spine, which drives away predators. Also, the babies, babies, are known to attack things two to three times their size. Newborns! Now let's move on to how you can tell the difference between a female and a male dogfish shark. Males have claspers. So this imagine this is the shark and the pelvic fins. And around the privates, they'll have two things sticking out like this. Those are called claspers. They're basically the shark penis. They have two. So then females, they have a cloaca. And it's the hole for everything. Everything. You know, your, like basically pee, sex, and poop. Um, reproduction for, this, for the doctor shark is ovoviviparous, a fancy word for giving birth to live young and developing young inside. Their gestation period is actually pretty long, almost two years. Their gestation period is one of the most longest periods known for any animal in the world. Um, leaders can vary from like two to 11 pups, but average is around like eight to seven. So yeah, that's still a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, dogfish <laughs> sharks, uh, for the male, they start to, like they're mature around 11 years old, so they start to reproduce around that time. And then females are mature around 18 to 21 years old, so they start to reproduce at that time. So basically, the males are looking for the older females. So you're not a cougar if you're a shark. <laughs> okay, so dogfish sharks are called dogfish because they like to stay in packs. So they'll hunt in packs too. They'll eat things like Okay, not me, but like squid, octopus, and fish. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, fun fact, they glow in the dark. They're called, oh, they're bioluminescent. Since they like to dwell in like sh or deep waters, they'll glow in the dark because not a lot of sunlight hits down there. <clears throat> so that would be the general information about the dogfish. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Dogfish Anatomy, where we study the external parts of the shark. We have first we have three parts. The first one being the head, this area, and the second area being the trunk, which is this area, and the last part, which is the tail, which is the end, basically. And then parts of the head involve like include the eyes, one right here. And then the other one being right here. And then above the eyes is what is known as the spiracle, which are openings that take in water. And then to the top of the head, we have what is known as the snout. And then at the bottom of the head, we have the mouth.
And at the corners of the mouth, we have these um, indents called um, the, lib the libial furrows. And then also like located towards the top of the snout, we have the uh, nostrils. And also under the snout and head of the shark, you have little pores. You can't see them, but um, they're little pores and they're sensory organs. And they change and they sense changes in the water, such as water pressure, water salinity, temperature, and electrical currents. And then towards the side of the head, we have what is known as the gill openings, where oxygen also enters, or water, and water enters. And then the next part is the trunk, where we have the two dorsal fins, the first one being right here called the anterior um, dorsal fin and then the second one being towards the end called the here. posterior dorsal fin and then at the bottom of the trunk we have two fins and they're called the pectoral fins and then also going off of that from the trunk we have two fins known as the um, pelvic fin and here you can tell that it's a female because of the lack of claspers. Claspers help tell um, if it's a male or a female because they look like two thingies and they're only present on the male. They just look like this. Like, like that. The next part is the tail and you can see like there's an indent kind of going on and it's known as the precaudal pit. And then the line going into like the tail is known as the caudal keel and the caudal keel extends all the way to the end known as the caudal fin and this is just the umbilical cord so yeah it's not a clasper Okay, so first off, in the circulatory and respiratory systems, water enters in through these two openings up here called the spiracles, and also down here in the mouth. So when water enters in, it is forced into the internal um, gill slits on the inside right here, but you can see the outside right here. Um, and then in there, the oxygen from the water is diffused into the blood, and then when that's all done, it um, exits back out um, into the surrounding water from the five external gill slits. And the blood that the oxygen diffuses through comes from the heart right here. Um, and the so the heart has like two chambers. One chamber pumps the deoxygenated blood um, straight to the gills for the oxygen intake to begin, and that's when the water just leaves. Um, <laughs> So this is the digestive system of the dogfish shark. So when you first open up, you see these, the liver. And the liver has three lobes. Um, one is left and one is right. And these two um, create bile. And then the middle one right here um, stores the bile. And then as you move down, you see the esophagus. And, this, and the esophagus leads to the, this J-shaped organ called the stomach. And right here, the triangle part is the spleen, which is part of the lymphatic system. And as you move further down, 
you, the food goes into the um, small intestine, and in the small intestine is a spiral staircase to increase surface size, area, surface area, and absorb more. It's much like the lie, and then food moves down and exits the body through here. Now we will look at the reproductive system of the shark. Here we have a very underdeveloped female, therefore it will be very hard to see the actual structures since um, a lot of them don't differentiate or double up and such until the female is able to mature. So first, on the anterior end of the shark, we have the ovary, which is supposed to be a cream colored structure that holds the eggs. The ovary is supposed to travel down to the egg sac where there's like a yolk for the young to develop uh, later on. However, um, this female doesn't seem to have developed that part yet um, very significantly, therefore we can't see it. However, we do have the uterus right here, and it's supposed to connect to uh, an oviduct, which is where the egg runs down through, and it's also where the young starts its development when the sperm and the egg connect. Uh, in the and then the uterus, the uterus is where um, the sperm is able to be distributed once the shark uh, goes through sexual reproduction. Because then the male shark would have um, a clasper, which is basically its penis, and it would go through this hole here and go into the uterus. As you can see, I'm moving in the uterus. Yes, and it would distribute its sperm into the female and then this is when the young would develop so basically the shark pees poops and has sex through the same hole right here in the bottom now on the female it is called the cloaca and that is it for the reproductive system